Good evening. It is six o'clock, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Patricia Eflin, and I am the principal here at Hernandez Middle School. And I want to welcome everyone to our future Bulldog Night. Um, this night is an exciting time for us because it is our opportunity to share some information about Hernandez Middle School, the school that your student will be going to next year. And it's also an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you have from our panelists. So you're gonna be hearing from a variety of people tonight. And this is, you're just gonna get a little bit of information about Hernandez Middle School, what it's like, um, some opportunities your student has to um, fill out on their choice sheet. Um, there was a um, information session that was held um, also virtually a few, maybe a few weeks ago, but I believe the, that information session is posted on your campus website and that can be found. And that informational night was more about the choice sheet, how to fill out the choice sheet, what options are available on the choice sheet. Tonight, we're really focused on the electives, um, what those electives are like, what the cost may be for an elective. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about band. Our counselors are on the call tonight. So that's what we're gonna be doing this evening, but I'm super excited to welcome you um, to our future Bulldog Night. So, um, like I said, my name is Patricia Eflin and I am the principal here at Hernandez Middle School. And um, at Hernandez, we have three assistant principals. We have a sixth grade AP, a seventh grade AP, and an eighth grade AP. So sixth graders will have their own assistant principal assigned to sixth grade. So parents, um, you'll have a a person to contact if you have any questions or concerns regarding your child. And that person will be Miss Catterton. So Miss Catterton, if you just want to give a wave and say hello. Hello, amazing future Bulldogs. We can't wait to have you on campus. Great. And then we also have two counselors here at Hernandez. We have Mr. Swords, and he is the counselor that serves our students with the last name alphabets, A through L. And then we also have um, another counselor, our second counselor, Ms. Cohen, and she serves students with last names M through Z. Um, and just a note, Ms. Cohen is also uh, Spanish speaking. So if any parents have, or students have any needs that are associated with Spanish speakers, um, she can help you out there. And so I am now going, oh, next slide, Mr. Smazma. So I am now going to turn it over to our counseling department and they're going to talk to you a little bit about what they have to offer. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Swords. I'm one of two counselors at uh, Hernandez Middle School. And what I'm going to do is just give you a quick overview of what we do as a counseling department at Hernandez Middle School. We basically address personal and academic and social and emotional concerns of the students. We also do individual counseling. We do weekly guidance lessons every Friday. Uh, we also have groups and these groups are uh, comprised of kids that we do a need assessment at the beginning of the year. And if kids have issues or have concerns about uh, making friends, um, study habits, um, anything along those lines, we usually uh, come up with groups. They last anywhere from uh, two months to three months at a time, and then we revisit the, uh, the need assessment and we, we have more groups. Resources, we have plenty of resources in the community and at school. If you go to our website and you click on resources at the top, it gives you like a, a, so many resources that we have in, in our community that, uh, and if you have need any help, feel free to reach out to us and we can definitely help out. We also have a mentoring uh, service that is run uh, by Ms. Um, Cohen and kids uh, talk with individuals in the community who comes in and is, you know, just provides a, you know, uh, a friendly face, you know, and they provide and they usually have lunch with the kids and they just talk about whatever the, uh, the student wants to talk about. Uh, counseling uh, website uh, is, it's, if you go to our website, you go to at the top and you look at um, staff and then 
click on counseling, you'll have our names and pictures of each counselor. And it doesn't matter what um, uh, counselor you, um, you hit in regards when you hit the uh, picture, the, the web, our website, the same website comes up. And um, you can contact us by phone, email, or any, you know, whatever is convenient for you. And also one thing I want to uh, remind the parents is that if we also have on our website, if you have any issues or, or need help filling out the choice sheet, you can go to our website and, and there's a, um, a link there that you can uh, hit and it'll explain everything. And if you need more help, feel free to give us a uh, give us a call. And without any further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Ms. Perch, our science lead teacher. Hi, I'm Mrs. Perch. I'm obviously the science teacher. This is Beardy. He's one of our, our um, mascots that's not a bulldog. And um, we have some wonderful teachers in the sixth grade staff. Um, obviously, we offer the four core subjects, which are language arts. We have math and we have world cultures, which is our social studies for sixth grade. And then of course we have science. Um, we do have multiple teachers on some of the grade levels because we do act or some of the areas because we do have like advanced science or advanced math and there's also algebra for some kids and things like that so there is some groupings like that they are also required to take spanish <clears throat> because we're an ib school so they will be taking that as well and so i am this year the lead for sixth grade so if you have any questions or concern for the upcoming year you're more than welcome to email me um, Kelly underscore perch at roundrockisd.org. I'm also on the website um, and I can answer any questions for you. Um, we're ready for new Bulldogs for next year and we've got to get done with our ones we have this year, but we'll be ready for next year and we'll be hoping to see you soon. And I'm going to pass it over to Coach Williams. Um, hey, how's everybody doing? I'm Coach Williams. Uh, I'm the campus coordinator for athletics and PE here at Hernandez. And uh, I did want to talk to you about your, briefly about your three PE options that you have for your child um, as they come to Hernandez. Um, you have a dance option that's available. Um, you also have a wellness option that's available. So the wellness PE is for any students that may not want to play athletics when they're in seventh or eighth grade, and that's just going to consist of your traditional PE, where we do sports units, um, we do uh, some some uh, fitness workouts, we do health lessons, um, and they dress out. We provide lockers um, if need be. Um, if you have a student that is interested in playing sports um, in seventh and eighth grade, then we offer what's called pre-athletics. And that course is geared towards training those kids all year as sixth graders to be prepared for seventh grade athletics. And these sports that we offer are cross country for girls and boys, volleyball, basketball, track and field, football, and soccer. Um, so uh, pre-athletics is tougher than regular PE because like I said, it is geared towards training your kids for sports. It also gets them prepared for our expectations in the athletics program. Um, the uh, pre-athletics class does have um, some dues, $15 dues. You get a t-shirt with that, but that also goes towards athletics fundraising. Um, and that's the main difference between those two. Um, if you do sign your student up for pre-athletics, because we do go by parent choice sheets, we do just ask that you have those conversations with your students to see if they're really interested in doing sports or not, because we want them to enjoy their PE experience. Um, and like I said, that pre-athletics class is tougher because it is geared towards getting kids ready for pre-athletics. If your kids do regular PE all year because they were undecided, they can still try out for sports as seventh graders. So pre-athletics is not a prerequisite for them to play sports uh, in seventh or eighth grade. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to let me know and we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys next year. Thank you. If you can go back real quick, Mr. Smazna, just to point out that dance can also be uh, selected as a wellness option. Um, so dance is also available as a wellness um, option. So your students can pick, just like Coach Williams said, regular PE. They can pick pre-athletics or they can choose dance. So they do have to choose one wellness option, but it can be one of those three. 
And now I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mrs. Faust, and she is our fine arts lead. Hello, parents and students. My name is Mrs. Faust, and I am the fine arts coordinator. Here at Hernandez, you have six fine arts classes available to you. We have a very strong fine arts team that we're very proud of here at Hernandez. So I'm going to let each instructor talk to you a little bit about their program. We also have a Future Bulldog website that our amazing Mr. Smosna put together this year that is amazing with resources for you. So please check that out as well when you are looking to your choice sheets. So the first discipline that I'm gonna introduce you to is choir and that is our lovely Miss Amy. Hi, I'm Mrs. Amy. Yes, I have a first name for a last name. Um, and I teach choir at Hernandez. We teach sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Our classes are split for sixth graders. There are only sixth graders in the classes. Uh, and they are separated into boys and girls classes. And so that is a lot of fun. And then when they get into seventh and eighth grade, those classes are mixed by grade level. The genders are still split. There is no experience needed, uh, whether your kid loves to sing or they've never sung in their life or they think they're wonderful or they think they're terrible, we'll take everybody. There is a $20 fee and that includes their choir shirt and any registration for competitions that we participate in. Uh, but please don't let that be a deterrent because there are always scholarships available. All right, thank you, Miss Amy. Next up, we have our band director, Miss West, will be talking to you. We do have two band directors, Mr. Onslay and Miss West, and she's going to tell you a little bit about band. Miss West, we can't hear you. Miss West, we can't hear you. How about now? There yeah. you are. Oh, good. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so my name is Mrs. West, and I teach band at Hernandez. Uh, just like choir, you, there's no prior uh, experience needed to be in band. Um, we do help them select an instrument. Um, that We have an instrument selection night, and we're going to do that by appointment only this year um, due to COVID. So you'll be, have a personal experience with us one-on-one -on -one to help you select your instrument. And uh, we'll have two nights for that after you, your child signs up for the choice sheet. We will send an email out letting you know um, how to sign up for that. The two nights we're currently planning on doing is February 25th or March 5th, and that's the same for orchestra as well. Um, but there are lots of different instruments they can pick for band. We've got flute, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, French horn, trombone, euphonium, tuba, and percussion. There are lots of different instruments to choose from. And on that Future Bulldog website that um, Ms. Faust was talking about a few minutes ago, we do have instrument demonstrations from the students. So you can listen to the instruments and see what they look like to help your child decide what they might wanna play for band. As far as um, uh, fees go, we do have a $40 supply fee. Um, that is to buy all the supplies for their instrument. So we buy their band book, we buy you know all the cleaning supplies they need for their instrument and anything else to help um, them play their instrument successfully. We, and we, uh, on a normal non-COVID year, the, our fine arts department has not, as a district has not decided if we are gonna have the $50 instrument rental fee again next year. This year they did waive it um, for school owned instruments. So if your child borrows an instrument from the school in a normal year, we have a $50 uh, instrument rental fee from the, for the district, uh, unless you're on free and reduced lunch, in which case we waive that fee. And as the same with the $40 fee, we never want money to be a deterrent for a student to be in band. So if your child wants to be in band, we are going to help them be in band. So we just want them to pick a, an elective that they're going to be happy and, and enjoy and have fun. We start them from the beginning and um, we teach them how to play the instrument, how to assemble the instrument. So they do not have to have any prior experience and we hope to see them next year. All right, thank you, Ms. West. Continuing our musical theme, we will move on to orchestra with Ms. Zilnicki. Hi, y'all. I'm Ms. Zilnicki, and I teach orchestra here at Hernandez. So in orchestra, the, the string instruments that we offer are violin, viola, cello, or bass. And just like band, just like choir, there is no prior experience needed. We start from scratch on day one, and your child will actually be placed in a class that is specific for their instrument type. So if they choose violin in sixth grade, they'll be taking beginning violin class. 
And same as band, it is $50 a year to rent an instrument from the school in a typical year, unless you're on free and reduced lunch, then that fee is waived. And the um, these instruments are chosen at our instrument selection nights. And there are two of them, as you can see, one is February 25th, one is March 5th, and they are gonna be by individual appointment only. So one-on-one -on -one feedback, helping your child choose the best instrument for them. Um, so please come to that. Um, I want them to try all the instruments and decide which one they enjoy the most. And so after your student selects orchestra on their choice sheet, you will get an email that will give you more information about how to sign up for those instrument tryout nights. So besides that, there is a $40 supply fee that gets you everything that you will need from orchestra now into high school, like a t-shirt, your music books, rosin strings, accessories, et cetera. And again, please do not let fees deter you from joining an orchestra. We will make it work. Every single child is welcome to be in orchestra and band and all the electives. Um, in a typical year in sixth grade, there are four concert opportunities, and then you also have the opportunity to join mariachi when you're in seventh and eighth grade. Um, there is much, much, much more detailed information on that future Bulldog website, including student testimonials and instrument demonstrations, so you can see all of that. Please view those videos, and definitely do not hesitate to email me at Kimberly underscore Zilnicki at roundrockisd.org. I'm happy to answer all of your questions and really looking forward to working with you and your children next year. All right, thank you, Ms. Zilnicki. Next up, we have our art department with Ms. Adams and Ms. Melton. Hi, my name's Karina Adams. Hi, I'm Betsy Melton. Um, and I'm just gonna give you guys a brief um, description of what an art class will look like for a sixth grader here at Hernandez. So in a normal year, we have a $20 supply fee for all of the art supplies that we use throughout the year. Um, usually we'll use things like um, clay, we'll do a little bit of painting, both in watercolor and um, tempera. Uh, we also do color pencil activities and learn how to draw with graphite pencils and blending stumps. So it's a lot of fun, a lot of variety in MS1 where our sixth graders are learning um, all the fundamentals of art. So you definitely need no prior experience to be in art. We take everyone, um, everyone has a creative bone somewhere in their body and hopefully we can help them flourish into the artists that we know they are. And that's all I have for art. All right, thank you, Ms. Adams. Next up will be Ms. Reyes representing dance. And we do have two dance instructors, Ms. Reyes and Ms. Bergeron. Hello, my name is Mrs. Reyes. I'm one of the dance teachers here at Hernandez. Um, in dance class, um, like Ms. or Dr. Eflin said, dance can count as your wellness, which is amazing. Um, and so, or it can count as your fine art. So whatever your child decides for it to count as, um, it can go for both. We do a ton of movement. Trust me, they will get that physical education in. Um, in dance, they'll learn a bunch of different um, styles. We'll start with um, jazz, then we move on to ballet, we do tap, we'll do hip hop, modern, and then they'll learn choreography. In a normal year, um, we would have two performances for your sixth graders. One would be a winter showcase that is just for your sixth grade baby. And it is a showcase that our advanced dancers actually puts on and does. And the other showcase is our annual showcase, um, our spring show, which is um, in May. And so that's with all grade levels, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I'm sorry, that's my son. Um, Sorry about that. But um, for dance, there is no audition required for sixth grade and they can come and just have fun with us and learn a bunch of different styles. And there is a $20 fee. This year the fee was waived because we didn't order t-shirts or anything and we didn't order new costumes. But that's what the fee will cover is a t-shirt for your dancer and um, costumes for them throughout the year. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, 
my email is victoria underscore reyes at rondrickisd.org or you can reach out to Ms. Bergeron as well and she's the other dance teacher. Thank you. All right, thank you Ms. Reyes and uh, Santiago. So next up is theater. So again, my name is Mrs. Faust and I am one of the theater arts teachers along with Ms. Kinney. I do teach all of the theater one sixth grade classes because I absolutely love teaching sixth graders theater. So as you've heard from every single fine arts class, there is no requirement. Your student, we're just asking your student to really think about what interests them and what they're passionate about. And those are the classes that we want them to sign up for because again, all of our programs are really strong. When I do think about talking to parents or students about whether or not they should choose theater, the number one thing I like to say is it has nothing to do with whether you're a drama king or a drama queen. Like if you love being in the spotlight, then yes, obviously theater is a great choice for you. But if you consider yourself kind of shy and maybe not that great at talking to other people, then I equally encourage you to take theater as well. Because in our class, we focus on a lot of um, activities that build confidence. We focus on working together in groups and learning how to make sure your voice is heard. And it's a very creative class as are all of our fine arts. And it's something where what I like is you get to be yourself in terms of there's normal is boring. I, uh, there's no one normal allowed in my classroom. You have to, you have to be yourself. You have to be unique. And so normal is boring. And so you get to be you in whatever quirkiness that that entails. But then you also get to pretend to be other people that is completely different than yourself, which is a lot of fun as well. Some of the units we cover are uh, Reader's Theater, where we're working with our voices. We do pantomime. We do a Theater Origins project where we get to be cavemen, which the kids really get into. And then the only fee that we have is a $10 fee in the spring, and that is because we do a class play, and that is when the parents are invited to actually come and watch what we've been working on all year. All the other performances we do are within the classroom, but then in April or May, we do a Theater One showcase where you get to watch your sixth grader perform in a play, and we work together as one big class to create that production. So again, there's nothing you have to do to sign up for theater other than to sign up on the choice sheet. And just switching my hat to fine arts uh, lead for just a moment there. On the choice sheets, it's very important that you really do talk with your six, yeah, your sixth graders that are coming in uh, about those choice sheets because we want them where they want to be. And they will get to fine arts classes um, unless that dance counts as their PE, then they technically end up with three. But you need to pay a lot of attention to that third choice just in case they don't get their first choice so that whatever they put as that third choice, they might end up with that just depending on how the classes get leveled and that, and how quickly our programs fill up. So please give a lot of thought to that third choice because as much as we try to honor that first and second choice, you they do occasionally end up with that third choice. So we want you to really spend some time with that choice as well. Again, I'm gonna point you to that Future Bulldog website that is under the counselor portion of the Hernandez website where you will get to see student performers, student testimonials, those musical demonstrations or music demonstrations, instrument, that's the word I was looking for, instrument demonstrations as well. And so we really hope that that is a wealth of information for you to choose your classes for both fine arts and wellness for this upcoming year. And I will now hand it off to Miss H, who is our IB coordinator. Hey, parents and students, um, we are so excited um, that you are planning on coming to Hernandez this next year. Um, and we are one of those really, really special schools in the district. We have the IB program, um, the middle years program at our school. And IB stands for International Baccalaureate. It's a worldwide um, known program. We have um, schools in the district. We have elementary schools with the IB program. Program. We only have um, uh, two middle schools with the program, and then we have um, Stony Point has the IB program as well as on the other side of the district. Um, so anyway, it's super um, exciting that your student will be coming to a school 
um, that not only has such great teachers as you've seen um, with amazing programs that we have here at Hernandez, but um, kind of that whipped cream on top is we have the IB program um, for your student. Um, and this is a framework. Um, your students will get the same curriculum, the Round Rock ISD curriculum that other middle schools are getting. Um, the IB framework is just an overlay um, that the teachers put over the regular curriculum. Um, and it's a lens through which they look to teach your kiddo. Uh, Mr. Smaza, can you move it forward? Um, International Baccalaureate, um, definitely one of the hearts of the IB program is service learning. Um, and your student will have opportunities at the sixth grade level, the seventh grade level, and the eighth grade level um, to participate in service. And um, our motto is think global, act local. Um, and we have many, many kids with many different experiences. Some of them um, have been out of state. Some of them have been out of country. Um, others um, don't get to travel as much as others. And so we want every student at Hernandez Middle School to be able to look into world um, events and to participate in service and to learn um, about many, many people, not just those in Round Rock, not just those in Texas, um, but to be able to participate um, as a human being in the worldwide population too. And so more information will be coming on that, but we just wanted to touch on that tonight. Um, Mr. Smosna. All right, so this is um, the middle years program model. Um, and if you can look in the middle of the model, um, we have three different students and we have um, the elementary school student um, and we have the middle and then we have the high school student to represent all of the programs of IB. Um, if you'll notice, we have um, action and service. Um, the eighth graders participate in a community service project. That's an independent project um, that we guide them and lead them through during their eighth grade year. Um, and that um, really grounds them for what they will find in high school and then for those going on to college and beyond. Um, and then you'll notice the next ring out, we have our eight IB subjects. And so those are the subjects where your students are going to be um, receiving their IB framework in addition to the Round Rock ISD curriculum. Um, and so what schools in Round Rock ISD currently have the IB program. Um, and so I mentioned that we have the program on the west side of the district, and we also have the programs on the east side of the district. Um, Round Rock ISD has nine IB programs. Um, on the east side of the district, we have Chandler Oaks and Caldwell Heights Elementary. They have what's called the PYP or the primary years program. Then we have Hernandez Middle School. And as I said, we have the middle school program. And you don't have to, um, there's no process of getting your student into the IB program at the elementary school and at the middle school level, um, every student is considered an IB student. And then at Stony Point High School, we have the middle years program. We at Hernandez have years one through three of the program. And then at Stony Point, they pick up with years four and five. And then if they want to continue to go on with the IB program, um, they can be a DP or a diploma student. Um, and there are lots of, um, uh, areas or ways that your students can go once they get into high school. IB is definitely one of those. Um, if you are interested in more information on IB and um, taking it through high school as well as the other programs that are there. Um, if you look at the Hernandez website, we actually have an IB section um, and it has a bunch of information about IB. It has um, a parental pack that you, there are links that you can click in there. You can look more at the curriculum. Um, we actually highlight on there each of the service um, opportunities that we have done um, 
over the years on there. So anyway, if you're interested, go on the IB section and just kind of look around and you can definitely find answers to your questions. Um, and just so you know, um, in 2019, IB turned 50. So um, the IB DP program has been around since 1969. So it's been around for a while. And the last thing that I wanted to mention um, we definitely like to help develop um, different traits in our IB students. Um, and IB has what is called the IB Learner Profile Traits. And these are 10 traits and we rotate through the traits. Um, they'll see, the students will see them in the hallways. Um, for those of you, if you've looked at your Hernandez happenings, we um, have a learner profile trait of the month. Um, and so you'll be seeing these as your students go to Hernandez. And these are those traits that we want to help your students to develop. And that's it for the IB program. Thank you so much, Ms. H. It's always a pleasure to learn more and more about what kind of characteristics and the exceptional type of education that all of our future Bulldogs will get to experience. And we really want to um, highlight that here at Hernandez Middle School, we really truly believe that each of your students has the capability and is already a hero. And we like to highlight some of those character traits as well. Um, they do pair just in line with our uh, character traits that come through the IB program. So we wanna highlight the things that we wanna help your student grow in as they are a bulldog. The first one that we wanna talk about is honesty. In honesty, we really want our, our future Bulldogs to be true to their friends, true to themselves and true to their community and their school. And that means that we need to be uh, ones who care about what is truthful and also ones who hold our friends accountable to truth as well. Um, the next one that we really like to highlight is excellence. Every single one of your students, and you know this as a parent, is exceptional. And we see that every day. And we really wanna celebrate that within our students. We want to uh, encourage them to give their best to their friends, give their best to themselves and give their best to the school. And in that way, we really believe that they will be able to show honor, not just to your family or to our community, but to Round Rock ISD as a whole. Our next uh, character trait is respect. And when we are asking students to be respect, we ask for dignity. You know, um, a lot of times we hear people say, you know, I want you to, res I'll respect you if you respect me. Respect is, is something that we share together. If I show you respect, you're gonna show me respect. And sometimes it's a choice that we make even when it's difficult. So we wanna show dignity and give dignity to our friends. And we want to do that for ourselves as well, which can be really hard in middle school. And then finally, we also wanna show respect and dignity with our school. Finally, ownership. We want our students to learn how to take ownership. And I'm sure that you understand as a parent, I know with my own middle schoolers, I understand as a parent, that it is important for us as uh, individuals to learn how to take pride in ourselves, how to take pride in our, in our uh, friends, how to take pride in our school, and how to own our own actions and be responsible for those choices that we make. So that way we can be proud of them. We can learn from them. And every mistake that we have is a way to grow and every uh, celebration that we have is an example for others to learn from. So we just really wanna celebrate that with your students. Um, and we just really are grateful for each, of your, um, for each of your kids coming up here, being a part of our community, being a part of our athletics or our fine arts or our IB program. Um, and at this point, I do wanna point out a couple of things. At the bottom of your screen, you will notice a button that says Q&A. If you want to click that to ask us any questions, the panelists will be able to answer them. And while you are doing that, I'm going to hand it right back to our amazing Dr. Eflin, the phenomenal Hernandez Middle School principal.
Thank you, Ms. Catterton. So just a little bit about our school days. Next year, we are planning, and of course it's always planning um, because we never know what the future will hold, but we are planning on a pre-COVID schedule. So going back to normal. And so uh, that schedule will look like um, if you had a student here before as it did in the past. So we do open up our building at 745. So students may enter the building, um, we do have areas for them to wait. From 7.45 to 8.10, we serve breakfast. Students do eat breakfast in the cafeteria. Breakfast is free for all students. Um, from 7.45 to 8.15, we have morning tutorials. Many of our teachers offer morning tutorials. And we always have that listed on our website, who offers morning tutorials and who offers afternoon. But if your student um, would like to take advantage of that, that does occur in the morning from 7.45 to 8.15. At 8.15, we release the students to go to their classrooms. They have five minutes to get there. Um, and school begins at 8.20. So the school day for a middle schooler is a little bit different than elementary. We start our school day um, at 820 and we release at 335. So that is what a middle school school day looks like. Um, and then we do also have afternoon tutorials for your student and that typically takes place from 345 to 445. So um, a little bit about arrival and drop off. Our parent drop off and pickup always occurs on the sunrise side of the building, which is the very front of the school. So if you plan on picking up and dropping off your student um, next school year, it happens at the front of the school on the sunrise side. Now on the Tiger Trail side, that is where we have our buses. So buses um, will go to the Tiger Trail side. So we don't really want parents there. Um, it is closer to the cafeteria. And a, a lot of our kids, you know, want to be dropped off near the cafeteria because that's where they'll enter to get breakfast and enter the school. But it's really not a far walk to get dropped off on the sunrise side and then walk to the cafeteria. And it's really for the safety of the students and the bus riders. Um, our bell, bell schedule. So we run um, a little bit different schedule than most middle schools and it's very different from your elementary schedule. So your student, um, as we talked about, will have a variety of classes that they choose from. Um, we talked about that they will have four core classes, which is social studies or world cultures, science, math, and English language arts, which um, in elementary school, reading, and writing. So they will have those four classes. On top of those four classes, all of our students here at Hernandez take Spanish. So that's five classes. And then they have PE or wellness, that's number six. And then they will be able to choose two fine arts. So that makes eight, that's right, eight classes. So your child will have eight classes next year. And so when they take eight classes, we have eight periods and we run an eight period day, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. And we call that C days. And, and I know it's a lot, but you're gonna, you're gonna know all this once we start school. And on C days or eight period scheduled days, each class is approximately 46 minutes. Then on Wednesday and Thursday, we run what's called an AB day. Students only go to four periods. So they go to uh, periods one, two, three, and four on Wednesday. And then they go to periods five, six, seven, and eight on Thursday. Those classes are then 80 minutes long. And then that enables us to have what we call a flex period. And this flex period is 50 minutes long. It allows us to um, have an advisory time for your student, but it also provides us time to do some small group instruction to pull students who may need some intervention and some remedial help. And so that's really um, why we do the funky schedule that we do is so that we can provide that intervention within the school day. So that's kind of a little uh, taste of what the schedule will look like for your child next year. But really the most important thing is, 
is that they will have eight classes next year. So communication, it's, it, it is going to be a little bit different. So um, I was an elementary school principal for 11 years. And, and previous to that, um, I was an elementary school teacher. Um, and so I know how communication is in the elementary school. Um, you get the Tuesday folder, the Wednesday folder that goes home, and you have a lot of the paperwork in there. Um, we're doing a lot of things digitally now, um, but in middle school, many times students um, won't have that paperwork that they're used to having from elementary school. All of the communication will come through either an email, it'll come through a phone call that we send out, um, a blast that we send, it, or it'll come through a newsletter, and, or it'll be on our website. So I encourage you to start looking there now so you can familiarize yourself with that, sign up for School Messenger, um, and make sure that your email, most importantly, your email and phone number is updated so that we can have that most um, updated information so that when we do send emails or a phone blast out, you'll be sure to receive that information. Um, we do send a newsletter. I send a newsletter out every other week that has important information in it. It has upcoming dates. It has things going on around the campus. And so I would encourage um, our parents to read that as well. And then here um, at Hernandez, we do have a variety of different clubs. Um, some of them this year are virtual. Um, hopefully next year when we get back to more of normal, um, we'll be able to have those after school clubs meet um, as we once did. But here are just a variety of clubs that we have on campus for our students. Um, we didn't talk about it, but there are theater productions that go on that students can try out for. We have an art club and that actually that club is meeting in a park right now so that they can still have that opportunity. And we have UIL. So I know in the elementary school, your student has had an opportunity to sign up for and compete in UIL academics. Um, and we do have that in middle school as well. And we have a um, more variety of competitions they can um, try out for. Okay, so that's the information that we have for you. And we are all still here on the call and we would love to take any questions that you might have. So if you will use the Q&A feature that's on um, the bottom of your screen, if you'll just type in those questions, um, we can ask our panelists um, if, what, so we can direct those questions to whomever um, is here, but we're happy to take your questions. Um, we are so excited to meet your students and to have your students at Hernandez. Um, you know, that transition from fifth to sixth grade is, uh, for a parent, it can be anxiety filled or you might be nervous. Um, the kiddos feel the same way, but many of our students, when they come to middle school, they blossom and uh, they turn into kiddos that uh, you never thought you had um, in good ways and bad. Um, and so just know that we are here to support and help you. Um, on that journey, um, because some of us, uh, I know when I was a parent going through it, um, need some of that support um, for our kiddos, but we are here to help you in any way that we can. Um, our emails are on our website and we can certainly um, answer uh, any of your questions this evening as well. So the first question is, can the slide deck be emailed out to us? We would like to review and share with my son. Um, we can't, if you give me your email, I can certainly uh, email it straight to you, but we will also put the slide deck on our website. So it'll be there for all parents as well. How does it work out when we need to transfer for the schools when we already submitted the choice sheet in Round Rock ISD for one school to the other. So um, is the question you need to transfer out of Hernandez or into Hernandez? Either way, the way it works is when you go to the school, whether it's Hernandez or another school, they will um, 
take that choice sheet and they will look at it to see if they can accommodate the choices that your child has uh, requested. Um, if your student is coming to Hernandez, just know that we are the only middle school in uh, Round Rock ISD to offer eight um, periods in the day so that our sixth graders have two fine arts choices and possibly three if they choose dance as a wellness. But, and that is because of our, um, because we are an IB school. So we are the only uh, middle school in Round Rock to offer more choices um, and more opportunity for our students to receive those fine arts. But yes, once you've already submitted the choice sheet, my recommendation would be to call that school, fill out a choice sheet um, so that you can be sure that your student gets the courses that they would like. Are there any other questions? We do have a video, Mr. Smazna. Do we have that to put into the chat? So we do have it. I'm going to add it to our wonderful website that all the fine arts teachers have helped me put together. And we're going to be adding this to the Hernandez website. Okay, perfect. So how can you just show the parents how they would access that website? I will. Inside of Google, they're going to type in Hernandez Middle School. And it's usually the first search result. And when you click on your first search result, it should open up a page that looks very similar to this. This is our Hernandez Middle School website. And you're just going to move down just a little bit. And underneath our what's happening section, there's all kinds of uh, up to date information right here. And I'll probably put it uh, right, right between the counselor corner and the future bulldog night video here. And the, uh, the copy of the video for tonight will also be right here in this location too. So you can uh, refer back to that if you had any questions. Okay, and is that also where the parents can go to see all of the fine arts information? Yep, on this website, they're gonna, there's a whole section of fine arts information and just below it, there's even more information. And I think anything that you can think of uh, is covered on here. And if for some reason it's not, the, the teachers will be more than happy to, to uh, answer your questions and their contact information's right on here as well. Perfect. Yes, so we will be putting a video, um, as Mr. Smazna said, on this link uh, where it says the future, future Bulldog Night, and that will be a little tour of the campus. So we did create a video where you can take a virtual tour of our campus, and so that will be on the website as well. And so what Mr. Smazna will do, and Mr. Smazna is our wonderful instructional technologist. He helps us all things computer. Um, he will also attach this slideshow from tonight on that same website that says Future Bulldog Night. So then that way um, you can review anything with your student or go back and refer to something that we've talked to, uh, we've talked about. And so that'll be there for you as well. Okay, last chance for questions. Um, can I just add one thing, Dr. Ethel? Oh, yes. Um, so if you guys are looking forward to um, athletics or even PE, it's a, an exciting time to be arriving at Hernandez when you guys get here next year. In case you guys have not been to the campus or driven around it, um, they are building a second gym for us right now. They're expanding our weight room. Uh, they just built us a brand new track that got completed this year. So you guys are going to be coming in at a, or your children are going to be coming in at a really, really awesome time where they're going to be able to experience uh, a lot of these brand new facilities. So it's an exciting time to be at Hernandez. Um, and so I just wanted to put that out there for you guys in case you hadn't been around the campus uh, lately. That's it. Yes, thank you, Coach Williams. It really is. Um, our new track is exceptional. And I know uh, the students were talking to me in the hallway about the new auxiliary gym. They're super excited about it. Um, some of our eighth graders are 
a little sad that they won't get to uh, play in that new auxiliary gym. But our um, your students, our future Bulldogs, will definitely get to take that opportunity to utilize the new uh, facilities that we have. So once again, I appreciate y'all being here this evening. If you've missed anything or need to rewatch something, everything will be on our website. We appreciate um, you coming out and listening. And please feel free to reach out to us at any time. You can reach out to anyone on this panel or anyone who wasn't on this panel. Our emails are on our website. Um, this is an exciting time for your student and we are so excited to have them at Hernandez. I can't wait to meet them and see them. Um, getting the sixth graders into middle school is one of the great joys we have um, at Hernandez and at any middle school because those are our new students and we'd love to keep them for the, the whole three years and get to know them and grow with them. So we just appreciate you and again reach out with any questions that you may have and we are here to help you and support you and your student. And thank you everyone who uh, was on the panel this evening. I appreciate your time. Thanks again and have a great evening.